Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we have just discovered that, for some reason, weather analyzers don't work on moon. Equipment situation invalid. How could that be? There's so much weather here. I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do need to go back to the Flea 2L, because we have another one to two trips. Let's see, how much spare power do we have? This is costing a power. Can we see our total power at the control station? Total power needed, two. Total power available, eight. Okay. So we're probably going to end up bringing our... Uh, we're probably going to end up bringing our power units back home and just recycling those. We do need to hop back to the to the rocket here. Which won't be too, too long. Just adjusting the prograde ever so slightly. Gonna start braking again at about 300 meters. That seems to be about the sweet spot. Okay. I uh, didn't continue braking. I started braking. Okay, and we need to be technically over on this side here to grab on. Okay. Let's head over this direction. There we go. Hop back in to refresh our EVA, and I'm also going to drop off the surface sample. Now that we can collect that. And then we'll go ahead and EVA Bob again. And then we're going to bring the passive seismometer, which may or may not work here. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to find out. Is the moon seismically active? It seems to me like just knowing that would be science, but whatever. Okay. And off we go. So, I mean, sure, we could have landed closer. There's no doubt about that. But that's okay. So, I'm going 40 meters per second this time. Definitely don't want to hit the ground at those speeds. And I'm also going to start braking at 400 meters instead of at 300 meters. Okay, time to begin braking. Okay, we still fell over, but uh, we'll be fine. Let's go. So, does the moon allow us to have seismic readings? We're going to find out. Hopefully. Then we're also going to need the Communitron. Okay, it looks like that does actually work. Exciting. Okay, so let's go get the Communitron now. And for that, we're probably going to want to have Bob deploy that, right? That seems more like an engineer thing than a scientist thing. So off we go. 40 meters per second seemed to work reasonably well. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and target that again. And I will begin breaking momentarily. Right about now. Okay, we're down to a few meters per second. I'm just trying to miss over on this side. So that we can come to a stop here. And then grab onto the ladder. Like so. Okay, like I said, I think we're going to want Bill to be the one to deploy the Communitron. We'll see. Technically, I don't think the Communitron is necessary. But we're going to go ahead and bring it. And then we'll evaluate what our overall power situation is once that's deployed. So, Bill, go ahead. Oh, he fell over. Good job, Bill. Okay, and off we go. So I guess a good rule of thumb for these uh, monopropellant heavy EVAs that we've been doing is start braking at uh, 10 times your speed distance. That seems to work pretty well. So that's 500 meters there, so we will begin braking now. <laughs> yep. Ooh, that's a ramp. That's a ramp. I'm sure Bill will be fine. So, Bill, I recommend not using the solar panels as ramps. <laughs> oh boy. That was exciting, to be sure. Okay. Let's go ahead and deploy the Communitron. And that should help it be in contact when the satellites aren't in optimal positions, theoretically. I think I'm going to place that right here should be fine. Does that actually point at anything in particular? I'm not sure it does. Where is Kerbin right now? Kerbin is basically straight up from us. I don't see it, though. It must be up here. Obscured somewhere. Okay, well, let's take a look at our power situation here. On our little outpost. Total power needed, 4. Total power available, 8. So I don't think we need to deploy any of the uh, photovoltaic panels we brought with us. So I think it's time to just head home. If I can find my way out of this maze. There we go. Okay, let's go. And we will be receiving a lot of these messages, I think. Oh my. This is a little faster than I was intending to go. I wasn't paying attention. Break. Break. This is a lot faster than I was intending to go. Okay. We made it here. Let's try again. I'm going to go for like 10 meters per second at this distance.
There we go. That was more like it. Excellent. Hop on in. And I do believe that it is time to head home. So let's just get out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and retract the landing legs. And I'm gonna rotate this a little bit, like so. Position us a little closer to straight up. Oh, come on. There you go. Okay, what's our apoapsis right now? Okay, six, seven. Once we hit 10, I'll start our gravity turn. There's 10. Okay. Let's go. And we're just going to sit right here at the horizon. Should be fine. Get ourselves all the horizontal speed we need. And how goes our orbit? I mean, not amazing. <laughs> but we're getting there. We are certainly getting there. So generally, we want our return trajectory to be increasing our apoapsis as we move away from Kerbin, because that gives us a better return. We'll just remain here at the horizon and continue burning. The prograde node will be getting here very soon. Oh, you can see that our time to reach apoapsis is actually going up now. So we're going to need to do something about that. Once we hit 20 kilometers on our altitude, I'm going to go ahead and cut this burn and create a maneuver node. Maybe we won't need it. Our, our periapsis is getting very close here. But I am going to go ahead and do it. So at the apoapsis then, it'll be more efficient to do this burn here. We'll go ahead and raise our periapsis to be basically exactly the same. About like that. 31.8 meters per second. It's just going to be prograde once we get there. So let's just go ahead and warp to this maneuver. It'll be a five second burn. We're going to want to be locked to prograde. There we go. Warp a little bit ahead until we get to the burn. So we're going to want to burn now. I'm sure that's close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. Don't really care about this burn being accurate. Nope, nope, nope. Other direction. <laughs> okay, so we want to burn prograde relatively soon, honestly, to head home. See, that's escaping the uh, influence. So sometime around here, probably. No, 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 no. Are we past where we need to be? I suspect we may be. Uh, this ain't... Th this is not... This is not terrible. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't adjust this inward a little bit. That's pretty good there. Bring this down to about 70 kilometers. That's decent. Yeah, I like it. Right there. So that's going to be a pure prograde burn. 
So we're going to continue being locked to prograde. 45 second burn. So we're going to want to uh, warp to next maneuver. If I can get there from here. <laughs> warp to next maneuver. We're going to want to burn this at 22 and a half seconds. However, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we will return to Kerbin. Subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.